Hello, everyone. Hello and welcome. My name's Rose Drew. I'm CEO of Interfaith Glasgow. And a very warm welcome on behalf of Interfaith Glasgow and Interfaith Scotland. Welcome to all those of you present here in George Square, especially if you've come a long way. And welcome to all those of you joining us online via the live stream from all over the world. It's genuinely a privilege to be with you all today. It's no exaggeration to say that COP26 may be the most important summit in human history. And we are gathered here at the start of that summit because the future of our beautiful planet and the diverse life it sustains hangs in the balance. The decisions and commitments made in this city over the next fortnight will determine that future, our future, and that of all the generations to come. Thank you for being here to mark this pivotal moment by standing in solidarity with people of all faiths and none out of a shared love for life on earth. Though we come from many different religious and cultural backgrounds, we have just one home, and that home stands in need of urgent repair. This impossibly perfect planet has given us everything needed to sustain a breathtaking abundance of life, but human activity is doing it huge and increasingly irreversible damage, and the time we have left to change the end of this story is running out. COP26 is widely recognized to be the last best chance for world leaders to commit to the steps necessary to halt environmental catastrophe before it is simply too late. And so we come together today, people of all religions and none, in Glasgow and all over the world, to express the sincere hope that world leaders and COP26 negotiators will put aside political self-interest and short-term political ambitions and will instead keep at the forefront of their minds the grave threat to our one shared earth and their responsibility to protect our planet for generations to come. We come together to hold the negotiators in our hearts that they might have the wisdom, compassion and courage necessary to work together to safeguard the future of humanity and all life on our precious, fragile planet. Thank you, Rose. My name is Maureen and I'm Director of Interfaith Scotland. May I also extend my warm welcome to all of you here in Glasgow and present online. A heartfelt acknowledgement also to all those who cannot be here today with us and particularly to the indigenous peoples of the world whose traditional wisdom has held our planet safe for so long. I stand here with you today at a moment of crisis. Our world is in crisis and we are in crisis. This is a deep spiritual crisis. But I also stand here with an absolute conviction that our collective thoughts, prayers and actions can and do make a real difference. And I thank you all for being here. We will create a more just, sustainable and beautiful future together. Powerful leaders have come here to make decisions that will impact on all of us. And this vigil held at the launch of Scottish Interfaith Week 2021 is a powerful moment of solidarity. And I hope we will look back on this moment as a pivotal turning point for the human race and for life on earth. This is the time when the world cried out, 
with one soul, one voice, one message, we are here together for our planet. This wee sapling that Rose is holding might look like nothing much, but the ginkgo biloba tree is a survivor. 290 million years old. There are fossils in museums of the same leaf. After the atomic bomb that destroyed Hiroshima, there were six ginkgo trees that survived that blast and are still standing to this day. This blessed tree and this ginkgo sapling has been carried by some of the many pilgrims who have journeyed to be with us for this historic summit. For the pilgrims who are with us today, welcome, welcome, welcome. This will be... <laughs> This tree will be planted in Glasgow in Torrey Glen Park on the 10th of November at 2 p.m. So please, if you can go along, do. But it will be planted to commemorate the coming together of global humanity at COP26 to find our way forward for life and earth. This symbol of nature's ability to survive and heal reflects our vision for a deep spiritual healing for humanity and our relationship with this one precious earth. Thank you, Rose. We are going to begin this vigil with the reading of the Glasgow Multi-Faith Declaration for COP26. This powerful declaration was crafted by religious leaders from across Scotland and the UK, and it will be followed by prayers from nine religious traditions. May I now invite to the stage Bishop Brian McGee, Ravinder Kaur Nijar, Imam Syed Razawi, and the Most Reverend Mark Strange. We will now have a reading of the Glasgow Multi-Faith Declaration for COP26. Our faith communities are united in caring for human life and the natural world. We share a belief in a hopeful future, as well as an obligation to be responsible in caring for our common home, the Earth. We recognize the opportunities that COP26 brings in addressing the urgent need for action in limiting the effects of climate change and the critical importance of decisions made in this conference to take forward the agreement made in Paris in 2015. People have exploited the planet, causing climate change. We recognize the burden of loss and damage falls most heavily on people living in poverty, especially women and children. We acknowledge the commitments made through the Lambeth Declaration in 2015. Now, because of the gravity of our situation, the impact of climate change around the world and the inequality of its effects, we seek to strengthen those commitments. We commit to respond to this challenge by reflecting deeply in prayer, meditation and worship to discern how to care for the earth and each other, and to encourage our respective communities to do the same, making transformational change in our own lives and in the lives of our communities through individual and collective action. Being advocates for justice by calling on governments, businesses, and others who exercise power and influence to put into effect the Paris Agreement, to make the transition to a just 
and green economy a priority and to commit to science-based targets that are aligned with a healthy, resilient, zero emissions future. We remind governments of their commitments made in Paris in 2015 to limit global warming to 1.5 degrees and of Article 17 of the Universal Declaration on Bioethics and Human Rights to protect the environment, the biosphere, and biodiversity. We call upon them to take urgent action needed to avert the loss, damage, and forced migration threatened by climate change. We look to governments to work together and with others to create positive vision for 2015, where addressing climate change is not just an opportunity to stop burning fossil fuels, but also to achieve cleaner air and water, to reduce food wastage, to ensure a just and equitable sharing of the Earth's resources, and to protect the habitats we share with all other life on whose health we also depend. Across our doctrinal and political differences, we know that we must change our ways to ensure a quality of life which all can share. And we need to provide hope for people of all ages, everywhere, including future generations. To offer hope in the world, we need to have confidence that those in power understand the vital role they have to play at the Glasgow COP26. Our collective energy and prayers will be with those working for a successful outcome. Thank you. The declaration states that our collective energy and prayers will be with those working for a successful outcome to COP26. And it is with this in our hearts and our souls that I will welcome representatives of Scotland's faith communities onto the stage one by one to pray for world leaders and negotiators to have the wisdom and courage to commit to the steps necessary to safeguard the future of humanity and all life on earth. I now invite to the stage the Right Honourable Lord Jim Wallace of Tankerness, QC and Moderator of the General Assembly of the Church of Scotland. I now invite those wishing to join the Christian prayer here in George Square and wherever you are in the world to do so now. Let us pray. As we gather here in Glasgow on the threshold of this momentous conference, let us give thanks for a bountiful creation. Let us acknowledge that we are all creatures dependent on God, our creator, and interdependent on each other, and that we have a duty to respect creation and to honor each other. We confess that, like the wayward son in the story Jesus told, we have squandered our inheritance. In contrition, we seek to return to our creator, confess our wrongdoing, and commit ourselves to return to what our God intends as our relationship with creation. We pray that the leaders of the nations will have a proper sense of urgency as they deliberate and negotiate in these coming days, that they will be moved and motivated to seek to restore our broken relationship with the created world. And we remember the poor and vulnerable especially those living in places where there is already damage, loss and suffering due to climate extremes caused by human action. People who themselves have contributed little or nothing to these causes. 
May their voices be heard and listened to, and that in a spirit of global justice, that fair and generous recompense will be made. And as people of faith, we pray that we can hand on to future generations a planet where not only are rising temperatures limited and reversed, but where the air we breathe and the seas around us are cleaner, and where there is a harmonious and responsible cohabitation with the rest of creation. Lord, grant to the leaders of the nations courage to commit to decisive and necessary action, and the vision to chart a way forward to a world where there is a just and equitable sharing. Lord Jesus, you said, I am come that you might have life, life in all its fullness. Let your will be done on earth, O Lord. Amen. I now invite to the stage Annie Rinchen Kandro, representing the abbot of Kagu Sami Ling, the Kagu Sami Zong Edinburgh, and the Buddhist community. Greetings, everybody. I would like to start with some reflections from His Holiness, the 17th Karmapa, who is the head of the Kaju lineage and also a committed environmentalist. The reflections are from his wonderful book, Interconnection. Our actions change the world. How we act depends on the intentions and attitudes that form within us. Bringing together the right environment within allows us to respond wisely to the environment around us. Inner conditions and outer conditions interact and create the reality in which we live. This interdependence is not just a theory but something we can all experience. Feel it in your every breath. Enact it in your every step. Bring your most noble aspirations out into the world. Share them with others and take action. I too join my aspirations with yours so that together we can serve as the conditions for all beings and this planet to flourish. And we'll do a prayer of aspiration. May all beings be happy and create the causes of happiness. May we be free from suffering and from creating the causes of suffering. May we attain that noble happiness that cannot be tainted by suffering. May we have universal, impartial compassion free from worldly bias towards friends or against others. And finish with the mantra of Chenrezig, the Lord of Compassion. I would now like to invite to the stage Rabbi Jonathan Wittenberg, Senior Rabbi of Masorti Judaism. I now invite those wishing to join the Jewish prayer here in George Square and wherever you are in the world to do so. 
Shalom, shalom, la karova, la rachok. Peace, peace to the near and the far. The world and its fullness belong to God. So taught the poets of the Hebrew Bible. They understood that we are part of a living whole. This planet, with its awe-inspiring myriad of interdependent forms of life. We're not the masters of creation. The Bible recognized in Ecclesiastes words that even kings, and that includes presidents and prime ministers and parliaments, depend on the soil. Yet we're entrusted with the privilege of working the earth with respect and the responsibility to do so with reverence. Therefore, God, help us to do so with fairness and compassion for the whole of humanity and nature. We cannot continue to treat the world as ours to monetize and exploit, or peoples, lands, waters, forests, and animals, simply in terms of profit. So help us, God, to restore justice and humility, wonder and joy in creation. Inspire us to combine all our efforts, local, communal, national and international, spiritual, moral and educational, economic, legal, scientific and technical to work together. Inspire us to collaborate across all faiths and philosophies, across the generations and across all national and political boundaries. For none is exempt from the duty to preserve and enhance life on this planet. The task is urgent and all-embracing. We have no right to rob from the future. We owe it to the world's children. Once a year, on Rosh Hashanah, the Jewish celebration of the birthday of the world, we blow the shofar, the ram's horn. Its raw sound, not music, not human, is a cry to God and to our conscience and spirit, the divine within us all, from the very earth, from life itself. Our duty is to hear it. I now invite to the stage Sister Jayanti Karpalani, Director of the Brahma Kumaris in the UK, Europe and Middle East. And I invite those wishing to join the Brahma Kumaris prayer here in George Square and wherever you are in the world to do so. Thank you. This is a message from the spiritual teachings. Spirituality teaches us that everything begins inside and is then translated into words and actions on the outside and we see practical changes manifest. One of the deepest desires of all human beings is to be able to experience peace and harmony. These are our innermost feelings since they are the original states of our inner world. Climate change is now on red alert. The call of the time is for us to raise our consciousness to a higher level so that we consider not only peace with human beings, but peace with all forms of life and the planet itself. When I create an awareness of peace within and keep that attitude powerful internally, then my vision and my actions are going to promote non-violence and peace for my human family and all living creatures and the elements of nature. Climate change demands that we make practical changes in our lifestyle and this is now the moment to do it. 
it's not possible to delay or to postpone this any longer. With the power of faith, we create the awareness of peace and harmony within and take spiritual power from the divine to make the changes that are needed in our lifestyle. We cannot have the same lifestyle that we have had for the last century and still expect to reduce carbon emissions so that we keep to 1.5 degrees Celsius rise in temperature. It is impossible to have both. We have to choose one or the other. Spiritual power means to be ready to change my levels of physical comfort for the greater good of humanity and the planet. A state of inner peace leads to inner happiness and contentment. This gives me the capacity to make the changes necessary on a practical level. Just as a practical example, um, our spiritual headquarters in Abu Rajasthan, India, have been working with renewable energy systems for the last 20 plus years. Let's just have a moment of silence. Let us hold that inner awareness of peace and harmony in the remembrance of the divine and send out those vibrations to the human family and all life on the planet. Om Shanti. Peace. I now invite to the stage Dr. Indrajit Singh from the Sikh community. And I now invite those wishing to join the Sikh prayer here in George Square and wherever you are in the world to do so. Brothers and sisters, Waheguru Ji ka khalsa, Waheguru Ji ki fateh. Khaak noor kar deng, alam dunia ae, asman zimi drakht ab paidash khudai. The Lord infused his light in the dust and created the universe. The sky, the earth, the trees and the water are all creation of the Lord. The Sikh Holy Scripture, Sri Guru Granth Sahib Ji, emphasizes the importance of elements in this verse by Guru Nanak Dev Ji, the founder of Sikh religion. Pavan Guru Pani Pita Mata Tart Mahat Dev Sarat Doe Dai Daya Khele Sagal Jagat. Nanak says that air is our guru, water is our father, earth is our mother. Day and night are like two caring nurses in whose lap all the world plays. The creator God has created all the creation and the creator is manifest within the creation. The earth together with the environment is the taramsal, a sacred place of worship where we human beings are placed as the head of life forms, which means we are the custodian of this earth. It is therefore the duty Tarma of all human beings not to desecrate this place of worship by disturbing the balance of nature, by abusing the environment through selfish overuse of the resources. According to Sikh religion, the purpose of human life is achieved by seeking complete harmony with the creator, the Vaheguru. The creator resides within the creation Therefore, we need to have harmony with our nature and environment. All world leaders are gathered here in Glasgow for COP26. Let us pray together to God Almighty to give these leaders wisdom, understanding, and courage to take the bold right decisions and right action which prevents any further damage to our Mother Earth and environment. I will uh, finish by reciting the last line of our daily Sikh prayer, Nanak Naam Chardi Kala Tere Paane 
sarbat da phala nanak says reciting naam generates high spirit and nanak also ask the blessing of god for prosperity and well being of everyone on this earth wah guru ji ka khalsa wah guru ji ki fateh I now invite to the stage Isadora Key from the Bahai community. I now invite those wishing to join the Bahai prayer here in George Square and wherever you are in the world to please do so. Thank you. We cannot segregate the human heart from the environment outside us and say that once one of these is reformed everything will be improved we are organic with the world our inner life molds the environment and is itself deeply affected by it the one acts upon the other and every abiding change in the life of humanity is the result of these mutual reactions As we join together in unity today, I dedicate this prayer to the world leaders gathered here in Glasgow and to all of you joining us from across the world. O thou forgiving God, these servants are turning to thy kingdom and seeking thy grace and bounty. O God, make their hearts good and pure in order that they may become worthy of thy love. purify and sanctify the spirits that the light of the sun of reality may shine upon them purify and sanctify the eyes that they may perceive thy light purify and sanctify the ears in order that they may hear the call of thy kingdom o lord verily we are weak but thou art mighty verily we are poor but thou art rich we are seekers and thou art the one sort o lord have compassion upon us and forgive us o god cast upon this gathering the glances of thy loving kindness keep safe each and all in thy custody and under thy protection send down upon these souls thy heavenly blessings immerse them in the ocean of thy mercy and quicken them through the breaths of thy holy spirit so powerful is the light of unity that it can illumine the whole earth ya bahaula I would now like to invite to the stage Dr. Srihari Balabajasula from the Hindu Temple of Scotland. And I now invite those wishing to join the Hindu prayer here in George Square and wherever you are in the world to do so. ganeshay namaha shri saraswatyay namaha bhumatre namaha shri gurubhyo namaha hari hi om hoping for unity in thought for all the cop 26 negotiators i invoke a prayer from rigveda for aikamatya suktam aikamatya su tam dharayami sam samidyu vase vrshan nagne vishwa narya ilaspade samidhyase sano vasunya bhara 
ಸಂಗಜಧ್ವಂಸಂ ವದಧ್ವಂಸೋ ಮನಸಿ ಜಾನತ ದೇವಭಾಗೂರ್ವೆ ಸಂಜಾನ ಉಪಾಸತೆ ಸಮನೋ ಮಂತ್ರ ಸಮೀತಿ ಸಮಿ ಸಮನ ಮನಸ್ಸಹ ಚಿತ್ತಮೇಷ ಸಮನ ಮಂತ್ರಮಿಮಂತ್ರ ಸಮನೇನ ವೋಹವಿಷಾಜುಹೋಮಿ ಸಮನಿವ ಆಕೂತಿ ಸಮನ ಹೃದಯ ನಿವಹ ಸಮನಮಸ್ತು ವೋ ಮನೋ ಯದಾವಸತಿ ಓಂ ಶಾಂತಿ 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 I now invite to the stage Reverend Linda Hagerston, Interfaith Officer of the Scottish Pagan Federation. And I now invite those wishing to join the Pagan Prayer here in George Square and wherever you are in the world to do so. spirit O oh, sacred ones you are the wind that breathes upon the ocean the wave that sways and splashes upon the shore and the creak of the boat as it gently rocks upon the water you are the beasts of field and sea communing with the earth winged creatures flying through the air and the fire deep underground you are the mountain lake and the pond in the city the desert sands and the lava flowing the kelp and the trees the fungi and the fern you are the arts and the discoveries of science you are the beauty of the written and spoken word and of silence you are wisdom in thought and deed you are the light of dawn the shadow of dusk moon and sun seasons and stars you are life you are us and we are you you are all creation and in honoring you we affirm our devotion to life on this small planet healing and protecting it the best we can it is the season of sawan of all hallows eve and for some the beginning of a new year it is the season when darkness grows before the fallow time when the veil between spiritual and earthly worlds becomes thin and although we follow different paths we call upon our ancestors of spirit and history blood and bone to forgive us and help us carry on today we ask those who are meeting at this hallowed time making decisions about the future of our planet to take into account what we already know to be true This earth is our mother, our father, our source, our hearth, our home. We exist because it exists. It is long past time to stop taking for granted and destroying this home which gives us all we need. We pray that instead those conferring today listen and they act with wisdom, conscience and compassion for the sake of our earth. and the generations to come oh I now invite to the stage Imam Hassan Rabani of Zia U Quran Mosque and chair of the Scottish Muslim Forum. Thank you. 
And I now invite those wishing to join the Muslim prayer here in George Square and wherever you are in the world to do so. Assalamu alaikum. I would like to start off this prayer with a call to the Azan. Allahu Akbar, Allahu Akbar. Allahu Akbar, Allahu Akbar. Ashhadu an la ilaha illa Allah. Ashhadu an la ilaha illa Allah. أشهد أن محمد الرسول الله أشهد أن محمد الرسول الله حي على الصلاة حي على الصلاة حي على الفلاح حي على الفلاح الله أكبر الله أكبر لا اللهم صل على سيدنا ومولانا محمد وعلى آل سيدنا ومولانا محمد وبارك وسلم وصل عليه اللهم ربنا آتنا في الدنيا حسنة وفي الآخرة حسنة وكن عذاب النار ربنا ظلمنا أنفسنا وإن لم تغفر لنا وترحمنا لنكونن من الخاسرين أو الله our creator the one who originated the heavens and the earth. There is not a moving creature, but you have grasp of its forelocks. Verily, you are our sustainer, our protector, the watcher over us. Forgive us for spreading corruption on the land and make us amongst those who spread peace and mercy. O oh Allah, give light to the word, to the words of those involved in COP26 in the climate change negotiations. Instill wisdom, fairness, compassion, and courage into the hearts of our leaders so that they may lead us to a path of justice for the sake of our planet, our children, and our children's children. O oh God, you remind us in the holy book, the Quran, Corruption has appeared on the land and in the sea, owing to the misdeeds of human hands. Thus, thus do we give them a taste of what they have brought about in order that they may return. O oh Allah, allow us to return to the beautiful path that you have chosen for your messenger Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa Bless our leaders and ourselves to return to the path of responsible stewardship of the earth and the limited resources you have blessed us to enjoy therein. And we will finish off the dua with the most famous chapter of the Quran, Al-Fatiha. Bismillahir Rahmanir Rahim, Alhamdulillahi Rabbil Alameen, Ar-Rahmanir Rahim, Maliki Yawmiddin, Iyaka Na'budu wa Iyaka Nasta'een, Ihdina Sirat Al-Mustaqeem, Sirat Al-Ladheena An'amta Alayhim, غير المغضوب عليهم ولا الضالين آمين وصلى الله على سيدنا محمد وعلى آله وأصحابه أجمعين برحمتك يا أرحم الراحمين So powerful is the light of unity that it can illumine the whole earth. 
I now invite everyone here in George Square and wherever you are in the world to come together in silence, holding in your thoughts or prayers the world leaders and COP26 negotiators, that they will do what is necessary to change the disastrous course we are on and to safeguard the future of all life on earth. For those who would wish to stand for this, please feel free to do so. Let us maintain a minute's silence for our precious earth. Thank you. I warmly welcome back my colleague, Dr. Rose Drew, to join me for some short closing remarks. This gathering has been a tremendous source of hope, and I thank all of you for being here in person and online. Let us use the momentum of this act of solidarity as a catalyst for further action as we commit ourselves to changing the course of history and repair our shared home. Farewell from me. And farewell and thank you from me too. God bless.